today the truck broke down on us guys what's good family all right so we're back with another video today is not uh it's not gonna be a happy fun video or exciting video or anything positive or motivational this is probably going to be one of those videos that everybody watches but nobody really takes heed to and everybody's like ah whatever whatever you know uh this is something i want to do forget the negative or whatever but it's also a very important video so today the truck broke down on us guys so we are right now in the process of following the tow truck to take the truck the uh, food truck back to the shop and then hopefully get it looked at the good news is even though the truck broke down on us and i'm having to tow it and it's gonna cost me 250 dollars to get it from where it was at over in madison back to where we our commissary is on the north side so uh you know 250 dollar tow truck uh fee i mean that's gonna pretty much all the money that we made from the location that the truck was at today is gonna go towards paying the tow truck fee so pretty much uh the people who work today work for free you know it's the cost of doing business though this is one of those things this is why i wanted to kind of showcase and make this video because this is a very very important detail that a lot of people misunderstand or uh don't really think about when they get in the food truck business a lot of the restaurant guys and that's what i was just telling boss lady right here she the one holding the phone camera she's the camera lady for me right now for this video uh what i was just telling her is a lot of the restaurant people who we're familiar with or know of us or you know they'll they, we might have a conversation in passing or something like that and uh they all say the same thing you know oh man it's so great that you got a food truck you know you can go to the money you know you don't have to wait and see if somebody's gonna come and stop by and potentially shop with you you know you can go to the money and that sounds so great going to the money like the idea of going to the money right until something like this happens until the truck breaks down and then you realize going to the money isn't always the best thing sometimes it is actually good to be able to sit back and let the money come to you that's really how you want it to be you want the money to come to you you don't want to always have to go to the money so this is one of those downsides of owning a food truck business is you're always going to the money and what that means is and i always tell people that a lot of people don't think about this when you're in the food truck business you're in two industries at the same time you're in the food business so you got all the overhead cost of owning a restaurant that people say oh well you don't have this overhead cost no you do because in order to have a food truck you have to have a commissary which means you're paying rent somewhere even if you're not utilizing that building you still got to pay rent at that building or you still got to lease that building or you got to own that building either way it goes there's an overhead cost associated with owning a building the downside to that is you own a building that you get very little use out of versus a restaurant business they get all the use out of that business because that building doesn't just sit there that building is attracting money that building is bringing in money whereas our building does nothing for us besides allow us to cook we could cook from our house at the our kitchen at the house but in order to own a food truck you got to have a commissary so we pay rent for a building that we don't really need or have to use as much as we could if that makes sense so the other industry that you're in you're in the transportation industry and anybody who's in the transportation industry will tell you cars trucks vehicles break down i just was talking to the tow truck guy and he was like one of the things that's funny that he a lot of people always kind of get a kick out of is they say yeah it's always so crazy to see a tow truck towing a tow truck and that's just to go to show that all of these if you're in the transportation industry if you whether it's a tow truck 18 wheeler uh uber lyft it's just a matter of time it's just a matter of time before you get a flat tire it's just a matter of time before your starter goes out it's just a matter of time before you know you, you your mileage is way up there and now you have to something's gonna break down because you're driving the car you're putting mileage on the vehicle it's just a matter of time so you're in the transportation industry all the headaches that come with the transportation industry you still get them headaches 
all the headaches that come with the restaurant business, you still get those headaches. You know, you got overhead costs. You know, with this truck being down, I also have to think about my associates who helped me run the business. Now I gotta find a way, you know, they typically would be on my other truck, which is, you know, we got two trucks. So that we, we need both of our trucks running at all times because I got people who rely on me to make money. You know what I'm saying? To be able to pay them. So when a truck goes down, now I got that headache of the same way a restaurant owner would when there's no customers coming in. You know, I still got that headache of, dang, how do I pay my associates? when there's no money coming in off of this truck now. This truck is down and I still want my people to be able to take care of this. And it's Christmas coming up. Do you feel what I'm saying? So I thought this was just a good learning opportunity for those people who are looking at uh, getting into the food truck business. Uh, don't think that you're alleviating yourself from all of the headaches of owning a restaurant because you're really not. You're actually, you may be alleviating yourself of some of the headache but you're taking on a whole nother headache, which is uh, the transportation of the food. <laughs> you got to transport this food to and from different jobs. That's the part of the, that's the business. So with that, you are a you have to think of yourself as a transportation business. So you're in the food transportation business. You got two businesses going on at the same time. So it's you you may lose a little headache on the restaurant side, but you're gonna pick up a lot more headache on the food truck aspect or yeah on the truck aspect the transportation aspect of the business so that's something to think about for those of you who are looking at you know getting up into this business uh it's not necessarily gonna just be all money and making money and one good thing that i do want to look into uh, i thought about this as we was um as the guy was hooking up the tow truck and i'm this is something i'm gonna ask some of my trailer friends the the people who got food trailers versus food trucks uh, and then we'll do a video maybe on the pros and cons of trucks versus trailers. Um, but maybe the trailers don't have as much problems because there's no mechanics. There's no starter. There's no, like right now, I'm pretty sure what's wrong with the food truck right now is the starter is gone out and possibly the flywheel. So I may have to get a flywheel starter. It's probably gonna be a pretty expensive job because the way that the truck is built, they probably gonna have to drop the uh, transmission to get to the starter and flywheel. So it's probably gonna be expensive. I'm already looking at this to be an expensive uh, job. But um, I'm gonna ask some of the trailer guys and see what type of headaches or issues do they come across running food trailers. Maybe you're more interested in a food trailer. And then we'll have to get up into the conversation of, well, what's the pros and cons of trucks versus trailers? One thing I can tell you right off the back, I love the fact that when we pull up to a job, when everything's running how it's supposed to be running, we pull up just as quick as, I mean, we pull off just as quick as we pull up. I love it. I don't, with the trailer guys, they got to back up and hook their truck up. Sometimes they may not be able to lead a truck next to or connect it to the trailer if there's a space issue, space limitations. You know, they might have to drop the trailer off, move their truck out the way. And then when the job's over, back the truck up, re-hook up, then pull off we fire that mug up and we gone back to the shop cleaning up you know what i'm saying getting ready for the next bit of money so that's one pro and con but we had to go up into that you know what i'm saying but i just thought that this was a very good opportunity to talk about that because all of the restaurant guys seem to tell us oh yeah man that's great that you're in the food truck business you can go to the money and this that, and the third but it's not always so great so this is just an example of when it's not so great so What's good family um all right so we are here at uh it's called velocity now it used to be called neatly cobble uh but we're here picking up the uh other truck um i just got the receipt or the the uh i forgot what they call it but basically the thing that tells you what all they fixed and uh uh Oh, the invoice. Well, I was gonna say invoice, but they actually call it somewhere else. I mean, they actually call it something else. Anyways, uh, and I'm looking at the breakdown, and man, it's this truck. I actually wasn't even gonna put this truck in the shop. I just did it because we had 
downtime and I knew it was driving a little funny, but you know, I was able to get from place to place. It wasn't like it was really stopping us from being able to work. Uh, but um, I put it in the shop just kind of sort of as a routine maintenance. Like, well, I'll go ahead and put it in the shop. We had a little, we took off for the holidays from Christmas to the beginning of the year. And I was like, well, I'll put it in the shop during that time and you know we'll start the year off fresh both trucks should be running like new and we should be able to get throughout the year right and this this truck the truck that actually had what i thought would be the least amount of problem actually had the most amount of problems so uh the cost of just for this truck getting the repairs and everything was three thousand dollars because they had to replace the clutch and it was about it was it was like 1800 just in labor like the parts wasn't expensive it was only about five or six hundred dollars worth of parts but the labor is crazy and i figured it would probably be like that because uh they had to i knew that to replace the truck they would have to drop the transmission which would mean that they would have to put it on lifts and all this other stuff get up under the truck and you know so i knew it was going to be a little bit of work but i did not know it was going to be that bad um but nevertheless it is what it is right you pay for it you get through it. it is what it is uh and you know you keep pushing you keep working and you know you just go from there so uh, we're about to pull around to the back side now of the building where the truck actually is and jump in it and see how it oh sorry and see how it drives so we'll see hopefully everything is fixed Hopefully it runs like a brand new truck. That's what I'm hoping for. I thought I spent three thousand on the engine shit. I could have bought a whole nother engine for that price, right? But hopefully, you know what I'm saying. Everything runs smooth. Everything is good, and you know we'll be up and running. Hopefully, all year without any problem. That's that's the goal for me. You know what I'm saying. We can make that three thousand dollars back because that's a huge, huge fee for maintenance or for service you know what i'm saying that's a huge servicing fee that's that's crazy so uh but just wanted to get y'all that update peace just got the truck back to the shop as you can see now it's actually dark outside um but i just got the truck back to the shop uh and man i i, I gotta be honest man even though it was a hefty price tag i mean what ended up being wrong with this particular tr uh truck this is the newer truck this is our diesel truck uh you've seen it before it's in uh the thanksgiving video uh where we have four walmarts um, or I think I, I think I named it, uh, how to make 8k in two weeks, something like that. It'll be something like that. Anyways, um, with this truck, this is a manual transmission, a diesel, uh, truck. So basically what ended up being wrong with the truck is we had to replace the clutch. Um, if you know anything about, uh, automotive or mechanical issues, uh, clutch, uh, replacements are pretty expensive. So I was already expecting like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollar job regardless. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wasn't really expecting a three thousand dollar, you know, price tag, but I did think it was going to be expensive because we took it to, uh, velocity. Like I said, it used to be called Neely Cobble, uh, but we took it to velocity. So I was expecting a pretty hefty price tag just because that's like taking your car back to the dealer to fix it. You know, uh, most of the time when you go to uh, a mechanic um, and let's just say it's a, a, a local mechanic or something like that in your area, uh, they're a lot of times cheaper than the dealership. But uh, with this truck being kind of like our bread and butter, uh, most mechanical issues that this truck has had, I've taken back to Neely Cobble or I've taken back to the dealership. 
Uh, and that's just kind of like my way of making sure that we always have this truck at its best, you know, because this truck is kind of like our breadwinner. This is where it goes and gets the most of our money. When we have jobs that are long distance or, you know, um, uh, downtown or just the, the big money jobs, this is usually the truck that goes to those jobs. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I want to spare no expense and I want to make sure that it was done and done right because... Uh, one thing I'll say, um, every single time, and I, I, I really, I, I'll be honest with y'all, I really, really, really wanted to be upset at that three thousand dollars that I just spent. Like I, I really wanted to be upset about that, but I started driving it, and last time I took it to Neely Cobbled, it was because the shift assembly was messed up, right? Now, when I started driving this truck and I took over this truck from uh, my dad, my dad used to, you know, drive this truck or whatever. When I took over this truck, the truck drove a certain way, right? And when I went and fixed it and I got the shift assembly fixed, it was like night and day. So this truck had never driven that good. Do you see what I'm saying? And even this time coming home from uh, the shop, it's like a brand new truck. It's like I'm driving a brand new truck. Every time I take it to Neely Cobble to get something fixed, especially if it's something that deals with, uh, you know, shift, uh, the gear, gear shift or uh, shift assembly or the transmission or which this wasn't necessarily the transmission, but it was the clutch which was kind of like. Anyway, every time when I get back in it, it's like I almost have to learn how to drive stick again because, you know, each each if you if you've ever driven a stick you know, every stick shift car drives differently. There's a different level of how high you can lift the clutch before it initiates and how hard you got to push it down before you can shift gears, different things like that. Every single time I take this truck to get something fixed on it at Neely Cobble, it drives different. Like this truck now drives like a brand new truck. I feel like I had to learn it again. Now, in that, at that same token, the other truck got fixed. I put both of them in the shop over the holiday break. And that truck has a converted engine. We converted it from diesel to gas. So it has a 454 big block engine in it uh, out of an older model Corvette. And they had to do a similar job. They didn't fix the clutch, but they fixed the, uh, what was it? They fixed the uh, flywheel, uh, which also it, it caused for you to drop the trans, transmission and things like that now that job i mean that uh work it ended up costing about 1500 or something like that 15 17 something like that right so this truck being fixed was almost twice the price uh but that truck even today we took it out today uh just to keep working and things like that and um I'm probably about to have to put it back in the shop because there's something it's, it's still not quite how I want it to be. I like for my team to be able to go get in the truck, crank it up, drive it, no issues. Like, because it's not fair for anybody to be placed in a truck and have to drive out somewhere and then end up stranded, right? Nobody likes being stranded. Uh, I absolutely hate having car trouble, you know, cause you, it, it seems like cars break down always at the worst time. So, uh, that truck though, even though it was cheaper to do, it don't feel like this. This feels like you're in another truck. It feels like a brand new engine almost. And I know it's not a brand new engine, Nate, but one thing I will say about Neely Cobble or Velocity is every time I've taken it, they fixed whatever they've noticed to be a problem. Now they'll call and, you know, make sure that you know, I'm okay with them fixing it just in case it gets out of my budget, but they're very, very hands-on and they make sure that anything that they see that is potentially wrong, they let you know, right? And that's just, I mean, that's irreplaceable in and of itself, right? So with that being said, I mean, I want to be mad, but I can't be mad. I can't even be mad. Like I, I'm, I'm driving and I'm just like, man, this is how this truck is supposed to run. I can tell. 
I can tell that this is how this truck is supposed to run. It runs different. It runs better. The clutch is just as smooth. It used to be kind of hard to push the, the clutch down. And, and I remember my auntie, when I first started learning how to drive shit, stick, uh, she was like, yeah, man, that truck is going to have your thighs hurting because pushing that, pushing that clutch down, you got to push it all the way down. And now it's butter smooth. It's like, I put, it's just so butter smooth and it shifts and it's no, it, it has no problem. It used to also make a little uh, noise when I pull out in first, nothing. It just pulls out. It pulls out. It does, it shifts gears. It does everything that it needs to do. And uh, they also ended up fixing, uh, I had to get the invoice and, and go over it, but they also ended up fixing something else. It wasn't the fuel filter. It was something else that they noticed uh, some fuel was leaking when they, when they were fixing. They went on ahead and fixed that too. So that's what I'm saying. You know, that $3,000, I'm sorry, that $3,000 wasn't just for the uh, clutch. It was for the clutch fuel filter I think they replaced and fuel something, something else they replaced, but I can't remember what it was. And most of the, the cost was labor, but this is just a part of the business. So I wanted to make sure that I made time to go over that and explain that because uh, like I say, you gotta be mindful. You are not just in the food business. You're in the food transportation business. You're in two industries at once. And People with 18 wheelers, like I say, Neely Cobble is the 18 wheeler, uh, you know, I mean, Freightliner, they do Freightliner, uh, I forgot all of them. Anyways, they're the place that these guys with these big rigs, these 18 wheelers and things like that, they take their trucks there to get it fixed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, you know, um, they are, they specialize in big trucks. They specialize in big vehicles. Uh, and I mean, it's crazy. I just, I, I almost hate to even admit <laughs> that it just drives better. It's just a better truck now, you know, and it, it's it's crazy. It's, it's been like that every single time. So, I mean, hey, it's, I, I guess this is a, the cost of doing business.